Hi booktube, it's Daniel and today I have this brown paper bag. So what's in the bag you may ask? Is it groceries? No, it's not groceries. Is it money? Kind of the opposite. Is it drugs? Well, maybe a little, but mostly it's books, which is like a drug, at least to some of us. And some of us have a buying problem. I've seen on BookTube a lot recently that a lot of haul videos are happening right before the event Read What You Own, which is an event created by Criminali where people are going to read a hundred books uh, that they already own before they buy anything new. So a lot of people, like squirrels, are sort of just burying a bunch of nuts in their collections before they stop altogether. Um, I still don't know if I'm going to participate, but I did buy quite a few books in the last month, so they gave me this bag, and I'm like, oh, well, might as well sit them in here until I can show you guys, because it's been a while since I've done one of these. So the first thing I found is actually something that, um, a sequel to a book I read previously in the year. This is Petals in the Wind. It is a sequel to Flowers in the Attic by V.C. Andrews. I enjoyed that first book quite a bit, so had to pick up the sequel. I think it'll be quite good. Uh, another book that you've already seen, but I did purchase it this past month, is Sherlock Holmes vs. Dracula. I got this um, because I saw it on Alfredo's channel and because I needed something occult detective uh, for the event, occult, De occult detective October. Um, and I, I just really didn't have a whole lot in my collection. So this was a really fun read. I did a review on it in a past video, so check it out. Well worth the three dollars it cost me. All right. So I have also gotten to the point in collecting Star Trek books, and I have a whole bunch of Star Trek books over in the corner there, where I can't just go into a store and then pick up the ones that look interesting to me because I end up buying duplicates. And when I got home, I realized I picked up um, In the Name of Honor by Dayton Ward, and I already had a copy of it. So I need to start like making a list or something. I also picked up The Planet of Judgment, and of course, I already had a copy. They tricked me because they put two different covers on it. But uh, I like this original one a little bit more, so this one is probably going to get seeded back into the wild. So I really just need to make a list of the Star Trek books I own before continuing um, with purchasing new ones, that is. I also got, this is a duplicate, but this was on purpose. I found this in a little free library, and it's the Barnes & Noble edition of Bullfinch's Mythology. And I have this exact copy, but... For some reason, the copy I found in a little free library is in much better condition than the copy I got at a used bookstore, so I'm going to swap it out, but uh, still haven't read Bullfinch's mythology yet, but it essentially summarizes like the mythologies you find in fables during the Age of Chivalry and during like Charlemagne's era. So it's a really pretty, not something you expect to see in a little free library, so someone was trying to, you know pay it forward or something, but uh, I will donate the copy I have that's just scuffed up just a little bit more. That way I'm not depriving someone of it. Um, got another Star Trek book. Fortunately, I did not own this one. This is The Starless World. One man's heaven is another man's hell. Now Kirk and the crew of the Starship Enterprise, TM, are captives in a fool's paradise whose strange inhabitants are more willing to face the judgment of their angry god, a black hole that will swallow them all and disgorge them into kingdom come. And this was two dollars, so well worth it. I don't really buy books for more than three dollars if I can help it, but this one was an exception, and that's Conan. And specifically, this is the El Sprague de Camp and Lynn Carter modification of the Robert E. Howard Conan series. I got Conan of the Isles uh, a month ago, 
and I really enjoyed it. Uh, I heard that the rest of the series, there are 12 in this Ace Fantasy series, I heard that they were better. So uh, I had a harder time finding this one, so I wanted to make it a point to acquire this one as soon as I could, and look at that. I know what story that's from, but uh, it is Conan versus his mortal enemy, the ape, which he fights a lot of apes. But I want to... This is one of the reasons why I don't want to do the Read What You Own challenge, because I want to get all 12 volumes of the um, Lynn Carter and Elsprague de Camp books, but like I, I can't buy them all at once. I just don't have the funds for that. And... I don't want to wait a hundred books before I start reading them. So really you can blame it on Conan that if I don't do the Read What You Own challenge, but I have so many books, like I could probably, I have a lot of short books too, I could probably crank out a hundred if I put my mind to it, but then would I really enjoy it? I'm, I'm torn folks. But uh, Conan, yep, and this is not in the bag. But this is something I, I got a little bit of Amazon credit, and I still didn't have two of these volumes. So I picked up um, The Conquering Sword of Conan, which is pure Robert E. Howard, and I'm almost through it. I'll probably get through with it today. Uh, really good. I, this is a reread, but um, cost me a dollar, <laughs> basically, to pay for the tax. So you can't beat that. I also got Kim by Rudyard Kipling. I've never read this yet, so I don't have any thoughts on it. Oop. I'm just going to get all of this series out of the way. More Star Trek. This is World Without End by Joe Haldeman. I really wanted to read through all of the, the Bantam Star Trek books this year. Didn't end up happening, but um, I'm still on collecting these, even though I do have access to them digitally. Uh, this, I can't read you the synopsis because that got torn off when I tried to remove the sticker, so it'll be a surprise to me. Also got The Killing Time, and at first I was, I was, um, confusing the cover with, uh, what is it, Black Fire, which has a very similar cover to this, but this is a different book, Second History a Romulan time-tampering project that has transported the Enterprise and the galaxy into an alternate dimension of reality. Now, Kirk is an embittered young ensign, and Spock is a besieged starship commander. Lured into a Romulan trap, Captain Spock and Ensign Kirk must free themselves from both their captors and their own al altered selves before the galaxy hurtles towards total destruction. This looks fun. Also... Star Trek The Captain's Daughter. Um, I won't read the backs of everything, but this looked good. And uh, that is The New Sherlock Holmes Adventures. And it's just a series of Sherlock Holmes pastiche by famous authors. So we have Michael Moorcock, uh, Amy Myers, Basil Copper, etc., etc. So I just finished reading all of the Sherlock Holmes stories um this year so and, and i really enjoyed sherlock holmes versus dracula so i really just wanted more sherlock so that was exciting i also don't think i own a copy of the divine the divine comedy uh i think i only owned uh the purgatory section so this was fr free in a little free library i hate this reflective cover but i'll live with it because the price was right this is a book I've already read before, but I never owned it, and that's The Crying of Lot 49 by Thomas Pynchon. This is kind of reminiscent of um, Kafka, I think, uh, or his, his story, The Trial, anyway, where you just are confused most of the time of what's going on. A woman who finds herself enmeshed in a worldwide conspiracy meets some extremely interesting characters and attains a not inconsiderable amount of self-knowledge. That tells you nothing about the book, but I think that that is actually good when you're going into this because you're, you're just going to be confused a lot, and then things will start clicking into place. Um, it's a really weird book uh, full of whimsy, I would say, so check it out. Um, 
even if after I read it freshly, I don't know if I'll be able to summarize it all that well for you. Now, here's something um, that Roy from the channel Roy Reads Anything is doing an event called Cleovember where he reads uh, books about Cleopatra. I am not officially doing any event in November. I just want to take a, a rest and just read what I want to read. But then the universe decided to keep putting Cleopatra things in front of me. And so I might be reading a little bit of Cleopatra. And this is The Memoirs of Cleopatra. I've also never read the Shakespeare play. So that'll probably end up happening just because I'm easily influenced. But, uh... Uh, best-selling novelist Margaret George brings to life the glittering kingdom of Cleopatra, queen of the Nile, in this lush, sweeping, and richly detailed saga told in Cleopatra's own voice. This is a mesmerizing tale of ambition, passion, and betrayal, which begins when 20-year-old queen seeks out the most powerful man in the world, Julius Caesar, and does not end until having survived the assassination of Caesar and the defeat of the second man she loves, Mark Antony, she plots her own death rather than be paraded in triumph through the streets of Rome. So, it just sounds like the story of Cleopatra from what I understand, but it could be an interesting... It's a really chunky book, so there's got to be some something in there that we haven't seen. Alright, it's the last thing in the bag, and then I have a couple of extras because they didn't fit in the bag. Uh, this is... Gardner's Modern English Usage, and this is just mainly a reference material. Uh, something that caught my eye, and it was like two dollars. Um, I know for a fact, and it's just been emphasized to me more that I'm recording myself talk now, that I often misuse phrases <laughs> and words. I, I think it has a lot to do with like the fact that I you know, grew up reading, trying to read above my level, and you would hear certain phrases used, but if you didn't have access to, a, like, a dictionary or, or some thesaurus, you didn't really quite understand it correctly, and by the time that you, by the time you grow up and you, like, start incorporating it into your own lexicon, then um, you realize, oh, I've been saying this wrong for like my entire life. And it's not even like you're trying to like elevate your speech. It just becomes ingrained because you've heard this word so much. I do a lot of audiobooks. And so like, you know, you hear a snatch of a phrase here and there. And you just don't, you don't know that you're using it wrong, but you use it consistently incorrectly. So I, I, I kind of want to challenge myself to go through and just like correct some of the, um, habitual mistakes I've made in the past. Uh, I, I've incorporated a little bit of like really awkward editing cuts when I've caught myself using things incorrectly in the past, but in, you know, real day-to-day -day life, you can't really do that. So I want to sort of improve my own personal speech, and I think this might be helpful. I don't know. Um, I've not encountered it before, so if it doesn't, I can always just donate it uh, but this was like an opportunity buy. It was really cheap, so I'm going to give it a shot. Something I've noticed also since becoming a parent is like my son incorporates weird words into his, his own lexicon. I don't know. Come here. Come on. You can get around the book. Yeah, what's up? Hello, kitty. You don't want to be up here. Oh, claws. You just want love down here? All right. So, my son... Oh, she wanted it in the bag. All right. Well, as I was saying, my, my son incorporates some strange words that he just hears. And he also doesn't always know the, the meaning of it. So, like, he'll say indubitably, and um, a lot of, like, phrases that he picks up are actually, like, UK um, versions of the words, because for a while, like, all of his entertainment had come from the UK. So, he's, like, going around talking about lorries. I'm like, what's a lorry? Uh, it, oh, it's a semi-truck. Okay. Uh, so, 
I just thought that was as cool to see like him develop that way. A uh, little sidebar there. But I have a couple more books. Speaking of kids, I found this in a little free library. It's fun and frolic. And it's just like a bunch of children's um or or how do I how do you phrase it? It's reading for interest. It's just like a bunch of small little short vignettes and stories um, for a particular age grade. I thought these were neat. Um, I'm going to try reading, the, reading them with my son, though he'll probably object that there are a lot of letters missing in the American words, like color has no U here. All right. Speaking of the UK, this is just something I don't really know a whole lot about, but it looked interesting, so I wanted to give it a shot. And that's uh, Punch Magazines from the 1970s, uh, 1975 specifically. This is April through May. Oops, February. And March. And these are just, I'm interested in seeing like uh, another perspective that I haven't run across before. So UK periodicals, uh, not much exposure to those. Lastly is another thing I got in a little free library and also has to do with uh, Cleo Vember, and that's Cleopatra in Space. This is uh, apparently a book about Cleopatra in space. I, I don't know how that works, but I thought my son might like it, so we might read it together. This is volume two, though, and from what I've flipped through, it seems like I might need to get volume one for us to understand it. This is why I never got into um, American comics a lot growing up, particularly the uh, superhero comics. And that's just because, like, I never had a, a good starting point in, uh, an in. Um, like, I read a lot of random things like Archie comics and uh, Sonic the Hedgehog, which was an Archie comic comic. I guess I read a lot of Archie comics in that umbrella. Um, but yeah, I, I just never knew what was going on in the superhero comics. So anything that was like a, a unified, complete story, I was able to get into. It's a little easier now, a days where you can just sort of go online and get it because, you know, you've grown up and you have money. But uh, from what I can tell, this is like a continual story. So we will probably have to seek out volume one if we want to give this a go. And that's it. Uh, thank you for joining me. And next time, I will put things in a box instead. Thank you. Hello, I'm back. I lied. I am not done. Uh, this came in the mail as I was editing this. So we're going to do our first unboxing. So this is exciting. I know what this is, and it counts. All right. Nice. This is my copy of John the Balladeer that finally came in. I had pre-ordered this uh, by Manly Wade Wellman. I'm not super thrilled with the cover, but um, this has been so hard to find that I'm happy to have it in any form. And I opted to get the stout hardcover of this because I really, really like it. Uh, recently read uh, the first of the novels of the Silver John line, so I will talk about that probably next time. But just wanted to show this. It finally came, and I am ecstatic. All right, thank you.